those sort of small scale, more sort of like personal moments that you get in grassroots motorsport, capturing those, is that something that you are able to feel even in a high stakes professional event, maybe like a Monaco or a Macau or something where there's so much more of that sort of political element and, and that budget really there and so many eyes on that event. Do you find uh, in your job now the similar opportunities to capture those sort of small personal moments? It's 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 much harder. Uh, you know, that's why my recommendation for people that want to get into motorsport photography or do what I'm doing is to start at the smallest stuff you can possibly manage to find because the access is just better. Um, so when you get to a bigger event like Indy 500 or Monaco or you know, any of the F1 races, any of the big IMSA WeatherTech races, Le Mans, um, you know, Sebring 12 hours, you know, the World Endurance Championship, all those events, you know, when you when you multiply the the money and you multiply the sponsorship and you multiply the fan base and and you know the time commitments on the drivers, it just makes it much harder to get those moments, to find those those details and have access to those those moments and those details, you know, you're not going to be able to just walk into the Mercedes garage, into the back of the Mercedes garage and, you know, find Lewis Hamilton, like, you know, snacking on a sandwich or just chilling, sitting on his phone in the back of the garage. You're never going to be able to do that. And you can do that at the smaller stuff and you can make something out of those moments. Um, so when, when those other, it's like a learning, it's like my internship, you, you start at the small stuff, and you figure out what works and what doesn't and how to do it and how to approach it. And then when you do get to the bigger events, when something does, you know, present itself as an opportunity, which is going to be fleeting at best and very rare. But when it does present itself, you know how to attack it and how to approach it without being a nuisance or in the way. Um, and it's all that experience comes from the smaller stuff. Brilliant. So starting on that small scale, did you feel quite early on that you were able to develop a style with your photography? Was was there a sort of fluency with the equipment that you developed quite quickly and you felt confident of, you know, here's my portfolio with my style in it? Or was it just experiments, really, and trial and error? It was experiments, but it's, style is something you just build slowly over time. It's not necessarily something that you get just by doing it once and then you have a style, it's, I still feel like I'm developing my style. I recently went back through some of my images um, because we, you know, as part of my work with Lamborghini, we just had last, last year in August, we had our 100th North America Super Trofeo race, which is the single make series for Lamborghini. And I was asked to go back through my pictures going back to 2013 and uh, I, I honestly hated going back through my pictures all the way back to the beginning of my professional career because I very quickly realized that I, I wasn't very good and I also didn't shoot enough. Um, so, you know, being able to be very self-aware and, and very hypercritical of yourself is really important to developing that style. Like, it's never good enough. You can ask my wife or my friends. I'm still not happy with my pictures. I still came out of the Daytona 24 hour last weekend, not happy with how I had covered it. Um, and I'm sure if you asked my clients or anybody else, they'd say the pictures were brilliant as always. But when I look at it myself, it's just not good enough. So it's it, a style is something you're constantly developing. Um, and it, it just, I don't know that I'll ever have a, a style that's truly my own because it's always gonna be changing until the day I retire. How do you, it, it, with that then, and with, with that sort of constantly developing fluid style, how do you learn and, and collaborate with the people around you? You have such a cool job. It feels almost that the, the people around you, the other photographers that are doing similar things throughout the weekend, are you, do you get a sense of competition with them or is it a much more mutual collaboration that you feel? Competition isn't necessarily the right word. It's, um, it, it's it's very healthy like we all push each other to be to be better to find something more interesting um it is frustrating when people just straight up copy you like there's pictures that i've seen where i took a photo or a, a sequence and then i see somebody else just did the exact same thing on on instagram and posted it like a month later at the same track the same corner the same time of day similar car 
Um, you know, there's no originality in that, but you know, between the professional photographers that are out there, I really feel like the, the healthy competition between all of us really pushes us to, to evolve our style and evolve what we're doing. Um, use light differently, use foreground elements differently, shoot slower shutter speeds, do just, just constantly changing. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, I don't feel jealousy toward anyone. I, I honestly like the people that I'm at the track with every weekend, we're all, a lot of us are very good friends. Um, you know, we see each other every week or every other week during the year and you're, you know, away from home, you spend a lot of time with each other. So when I see them posting something or one of their clients posts something, I'm like, man, that's a really nice photo. You know, I don't want to go copy it, but I can put my own spin on it to the point where it's mine and not just a, a straight copy of what they did. Like I've seen other people do on with some of my work or other people's work. And are there, when you were first developing photography and, and becoming, l learning how much of a passion it was for you, I suppose, are there any particular photographers that stood out to you in, in your memory of thinking, oh, wow, that's, I've never seen someone do something like that before, or I wish I, you know, that's a, sort of an aspiration to reach that level of quality. Any examples of that? Yeah. So like when I was first starting, I would look at, at issues of F1 racing magazine, which is a, a Haymarket publication. Um, and in each magazine, they had a kind of a double page feature about, you know, a picture from a recent race with all the camera settings in it. And I would look at these pictures um, from, from Mark Thompson, uh, Darren Heath, Vladimir Reese, James Moy, you know, Laurent Charnier. Uh, there's so many photographers that are covering Formula One, which was the sport that I was mainly following at the time. Uh, and to see the work that they had, had created made me, it, it honestly made me fall in love with photography of car racing because it's not just photography it's how you tell the stories of car racing and how you can tell those stories using shutter speed and color and light um, portraiture you know candid portraiture it's not just like you know guy on a white background you know kind of a boring portrait like you want to capture them in their environment that's not even necessarily in the race car and so when i was looking at these pictures that's what really made me say to myself like wow it's not just it's not just a car on a racetrack there's more to it than that and looking at their pictures that they created and and some of them a lot of them are very good friends of mine now these photographers that i looked up to when i was younger and starting my career those photographers really helped me fall in love with the sport not just photography but the sport itself and then when i figured out how i could kind of merge the two myself um, it's been very humbling to have people kind of feel the same way about me toward photography and and the sport of motorsport, not just not just Formula One, not just IMSA WeatherTech or sports car racing, but you know motorsport that they can see that it's a beautiful thing, which is exactly how I felt when I was looking at their pictures. Mm -hmm.